Hey, booktube. Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do my March wrap-up. I know it's later than I wanted it to be. Isn't it always? <laughs> but I read some really, really great books in March, so I'm really, really excited to talk about them. I started off the month with a back-to-back -back rereading and new like sequel release, which is one of my favorite things if I'm able to time it right and do it right. So I reread Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho before reading The True Queen by Zen Cho for podcast. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed both. I think that I may have enjoyed the second one just a little bit more than the first one, although they are pretty different books. We are getting away from our like English drawing room, Society of Manners and Magic book that we get in the first one and into a much more expansive worldview in the second one. So I really, really appreciated it. I'll be interesting to see if Zen has more books planned for this series and what the plans are for those books. But I really, really enjoyed The True Queen. And so I recommend picking it up because it's actually a really new release. After that, I reread Beyond Pain, which is the third book in the Beyond series. If you did not watch my February wrap up, you will have missed me mentioning that I'm specifically rereading these, not just because I love them, but I, because I do, uh, but because my friend Anna and I are sitting down and doing a podcast project where we are rereading and talking about each book in the series in depth. So I am doing like a much more slower paced reread for that. Beyond Pain is the third book in the series. It's Six and Bren's book. I love it a lot. Please come slide into my DMs if you need more details of why and you haven't already heard me talk about this book a million times. After that, I read a graphic novel for the Booktube SFF Awards. I cannot believe it took me so long to read this graphic novel. I am such a huge fan of these creators and all of their properties. I read The Adventure Zone, Here There Be Gerblins, the first like graphic novel of the balance arc for the adventure zone which if you don't know this is the graphic novel edition of the adventure zone podcast which is run by the McElroy brothers Justin Travis and Griffin and their dad Clint like I said I really really love the McElroy family and just their whole like catalog of creative media and this was no different I'm really looking forward to talking to some of the other judges about it who are maybe less into the like original podcast to see how the graphic novel translated for them but I thought it came across really really well after that I re-listened to The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner on audio this was like a comfort re-listen reread for me I really love this book this book is basically a road trip storytelling narrative with a huge twist at the end that's really worth the payoff. I love Jen who is our main character who is the thief and all of the twists and turns his life takes and how beautifully this first story sets all of that up. So I had a really really fun time re-listening to this one. I'm still trying to decide if I'm gonna have time to re-listen to the rest of the Queen's Thief series before the final book comes out next year but it's on my list of things that I want to do so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. After that I read I did another spat of reading for the booktube SFF Awards. This time I read Beneath the Sugar Skies which is the third novella in Shauna McGuire's We Were Children series. This one deals with like the highland of fantasy and the highland of nonsense and it's a candy world. So there's commentaries on like fatness and media and body portrayal and body shaming and positivity in media that were really interesting. There was a lot of discussion about where this fell on our rankings of the other novellas in the Goodreads thread, which I will link down below. So this is a really kind of controversial book in terms of where it ranks for people, but I really enjoyed reading it, even if it didn't quite make it to my favorite of all of the books in this novella series. After that was Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, a graphic novel, A Modern Retelling of Little Women by Ray Tercero, which is a really long title for exactly what it says, a graphic novel, modern retelling of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. In this adaptation, Jo is the stepsister to Meg, Beth, and Amy. Jo and her mom are white. Meg, Beth, Amy, and their dad are black. So there's some really good discussion of blending of experiences and families and lenses of viewing the world. We add an addition to the fact that by the end of this book, Jo is coming out of the closet as queer and how that affects the storyline of her life going forward. Obviously, this graphic novel retelling does not do the full expanse of Little Women because it makes a pretty severe like plot departure point from that particular moment, but it still carries a lot of the same really beautiful heart and domesticity and warmth and family feelings while feeling very modern. I really, really liked the more cartoony, colorful, bold illustration style of this graphic novel. And if it's been a while since you've read Little Women, or if it's been on your list and you've never quite gotten around to it, I really think that this is one that's worth adding to your adaptations kind of uh, Rolodex in terms of really, really wonderful ones to look at. After that, I listened to Parkland, A Movement by Dave Cullen on audio. Friends, this is a very heavy book, content warnings for school shootings, for death in a school. So content warnings for school shootings, for young death 
for tragedy, for all of the things that come along with the emotional impact of that. This is going to be a book that's tough to listen to, especially in the beginning when Dave Cullen is kind of providing a rundown of what happened at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. If you're unfamiliar with the name Dave Cullen or you're wondering why it rings a bell, it's because he wrote basically the definitive book on the Columbine shooting and he spent 10 years interviewing survivors and community members in Littleton to write that book and in the process developed his own case of like secondhand PTSD. So this book, while it covers what happened in Parkland, is much more about the prospect and process of the social movement that has come out of that and how these community members and high schoolers used the different technological and cultural landscape to shift the conversations in a way that has not been shifted since we've kind of seen Columbine happen. So it's a very intense book. It's a very hard book, but it's really, really fascinating and really, really beautiful. It made me cry. It gave me chills several different times, and I really recommend picking it up if you have the emotional spoons. After that, I read Black is the Body, stories from my grandmother's time, my mother's time, and my time by Emily Bernard. This is a collection of essays by Emily Bernard about race in America, about expressions of race in America, about her life being married to a white man and how that interacts with her black community, um, teaching the N-word in school and various ways that people in her life and her community have approached the use of that word, the existence of her adoptive black daughters versus her own black identity, them being from the continent of Africa and her being raised African American and where those overlap and intersect. It's a really, really interesting, short, compact book. There's a lot in each one of these essays. It really behooves a slow reading. I'm so glad I got the chance to check this out multiple times in the library to really work my way through each essay and kind of sit with them a little bit. And I really, really enjoyed Emily Bernard's writing and her lens and the way that she expressed um, a lot of really difficult and kind of multi-layered topics in a way that was still very clear and concise and really hit very hard. So I highly recommend picking this up from wherever you can get your books. Um, request it at your library, please. If they don't have it, they should get a copy. Um, and then after that, I was finally time for another podcast book. I needed something a little light. I had read two kind of heavy books back to back. So after that, it was American Dreamer by Adriana Herrera. This is already in my best books of the year list. I know that for a fact. This is the romance novel between Nesto, who runs an Afro-Caribbean food truck and is moving upstate to Ithaca, New York, and Jude Fuller, the young adult librarian dealing with some queer tragedy in his past who is just trying to lay low and find a new found family for himself when Nesto comes and just overturns his whole world. It's so beautifully balanced, so beautifully well done. It's astounding that it's a debut novel. I won't say anything else about it because I'll link the podcast episode down below, but I just so deeply loved and enjoyed this book that the minute I finished it, I went back to page one and I reread all of my favorite parts again right away. Um, after that, I read Beyond Temptation and Beyond Jealousy, which is book uh, three and a half and book four in the Beyond series for the same reason that I've been reading the Beyond series this year. This is my favorite Beyond book. Beyond Jealousy is the Rachel Ason Cruz book. I love it so much. It's the book of my heart. You guys know that. So it was a really fun to get to read it again and then to talk to Anna about it with and to pull apart the threads of why and what's going on in the book that I so thoroughly enjoyed. After that, my last two books of the month, the first one was The Trial of Lizzie Borden by Clara Robertson. This is a nonfiction audiobook about Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden has always been of particular interest to me ever since I was very, very young and I checked out a nonfiction book at the library about The Trial of Lizzie Borden. And it was my first kind of introduction into the world of like planned homicide and female perpetrators thereof in like a real sense and not a fictional sense. It was very dark at the time. I really loved it probably explain some things. But since then, I've just made it a habit to read most of the Lizzie Borden books that come out. And this one was no exception. I wouldn't say that this one was like particularly great or enlightening or doing anything like revelatory with the trial or the information therein. But it's a nice, cohesively presented narrative that I really enjoyed listening to. And then the last book that I read this month was Pulp by Robin Talley. This did one of my favorite uh, narrative structure things where there's a dual timeline in the present day and in the past. And then the present day, our main character is studying a thing that is happening in the narrative of the past timeline. So in this case, modern teenager Abby Zimmett goes to a magnet school and because of some turmoil in her home life and her with her friends and with going to college, she finds and latches on to this lesbian pulp novel and decides she's going to do her senior project on lesbian pulp novels. Flashback to 1955, the height of McCarthyism and the Lavender Scale, and we meet Janet Jones, 
who is the author of the pulp novel that Abby Summit has so fallen in love with, who herself in her own line, it, timeline is just discovering the world of queer expression and lifestyle in Washington, D.C. in 1955. So obviously this book is really fraught, especially in the historical timeline, but also really pulling those threads out narratively really beautifully for the current timeline in a way that kept everything feeling fresh without being too dull. I think that in an attempt to kind of subvert some expectations of the genre, Robin Talley made some narrative leaps that were a little bit harder to follow in terms of stretching believability for me in particular, but I loved the rest of the book so much that those things really didn't bother me and I really just was able to sink into both of these timelines really well. There were a couple of pacing issues I may have edited a little tighter, but on the whole this was a really great book to end the month with. So there you have it friends finally my March wrap up, which means we are all caught up for the month of April, which means I'm so excited. Hopefully I won't be falling terribly behind again, but if you've read any of these, if you want to read any of these, if you have general thoughts and concerns, please leave them down below. Send me a comment, hit me up in Twitter in the DMs. I'm always here to talk book with you, books with you folks. So until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading. Bye.